So, uh, in terms of the Orange Sky website, um, the website is still very much geared towards um, donating. Now, first thing here is this is not very Giving Tuesday related, but this background here wouldn't pass accessibility guidelines. So I would definitely want to make this button in particular, your donate button, much more visible so that people can go through and make their donation. Um, but I really like the fact that you've got some messaging on your website about um, impact straight away. Now, second thing is making sure that we've actually got online donations and check. You've got your online day, donations all set up and ready to go and love that. One thing that I really like about the way that you've got your donations is on your homepage, you don't have anything relating donate to impact, but you definitely do on your donation page. Uh, so we've got some nice predefined dollar handles for different amounts that tell me exactly what my money is going to go towards. So if I wanted to support an entire shift of free laundry, to me, I'm not, it's not a $288 donation. I'm buying a shift of free laundry. So it's a lot easier to um, send that message and to make sure that um, we've got all of that set up. Another area where you're already doing really well, Kate. So, I mean, you're a bit nervous about getting picked on, but you're doing all right. Um, make sure we've got an option there to uh, convert people to become regular donors. So in this particular case, Orange Sky, great job. Uh, I'd like to make this donation once, weekly, monthly or yearly. So this provides a great mechanism to make sure that people continue to donate uh, as they go. Um, Giving Tuesday is an opportunity to get that first donation. But every opportunity that we can take to convert that first donation to regular giving is obviously going to improve the impact of that donation as well. Now, one thing that we really need to have in place with the um, donation page, and maybe you can let me know in the chat, Kate, whether you've got this up and running or not, but we want to make sure that we've got our Google Analytics set up with our conversion tracking so that we know how much money is generated through this page, through different channels and through different media. Uh, and so we know which outlet is providing the, um, the best return. It's, it's inevitable that we're going to have some, um, and you do Kate, so that's fantastic. It's inevitable that we're gonna have some spend on um, marketing and advertising for our donations page. So we definitely want to make sure that we can track down which are providing the best return um, and tailor that accordingly. So our online donations are all set up. We're all good. It's all ready to go. Um, so I really like this donations page, Kate. So good job. Um, all right. One other thing here is um, it's become very common to try and get support for uh, dollar matching campaigns. And Orange Sky have some great corporate sponsors. They're on the homepage. Uh, so this is a good opportunity to re-engage with your partners, with your corporate donors, uh, and look to get their support for a dollar matching campaign. Um, even if you can get different donors in different states, when you're a, a national organization like Orange Sky, um, different donors in different states to support different people appropriately is, is the best way, uh, best way forward. Um, and that also lets smaller, um, smaller businesses get involved with dollar matching campaigns as well. So if we can get major donors, get board members, get um, even minor donors involved and engaged in a dollar matching campaign, now is the time to start sending them out for that so that you can make a big splash when it comes to Giving Tuesday. All right. You're a good person to pick on, Kate. I like this. It's good. Um, okay. Now, the other thing is we want to make sure that we've got a good run-up with our campaigns. So one thing I noticed when I did a search for Orange Sky is you're already running your Google ads. 
I have no doubt that those Google ads are being run through the um, Google for Nonprofits program. So you would be getting that real estate free of charge, which is fantastic. Um, but now is a really good time to get those up and running if you don't have them up and running yet, so that you can make sure that you're bringing people through uh, early uh, and often. You may want to make sure that you get people through um, onto your website early and get them into newsletters. We'll talk about newsletters in a minute. Um, but one thing that I would do here, Kate, is I would make sure that we've actually got some ads and site links set up for your donations page. Um, if you haven't already, you'll need to make sure that your second domain there is uh, registered with Google for that program. Um, you can have multiple um, multiple domains in the Google Ad Grants program as long as you actually get them approved through Google. Just do a Google search for the multiple domain application form and you'll find that or I can send that out to you after this. Um, and so Kate's saying here uh, that she's just launched the, the Wiru Dryer as part of the innovation program. So building our web visitor retargeting audience for our holiday campaign. Perfect. Um, all the audiences that you can get, the better. Um, are you using some form of marketing automation or CRM to power that, Kate? Well, Kate's replying to that. Um, so what Kate's talking about there is making sure that we have the retargeting audiences set up so that anyone who's visited the Orange Sky website in the last, um, depending on the window that you set up, up to 540 days, uh, we'll see ads on either Google or Facebook to come through the website. Um, and now is definitely the time to be thinking about that and getting all of that set up um, because you really need to make sure that you've got those audiences in advance. So what we can do is, um, so Kate's implementing Salesforce, but uh, just using pixels at the moment. Um, you can use your Google and Facebook pixels to make sure that you are identifying visitors who visited the site, um, but you can also apply different uh, parameters to those pixels. So for example, you might want to just speak to people who haven't made a donation. Um, you might want to have a separate campaign to people who have made a donation, but they haven't made a donation in the last week. Um, we've actually been getting some really good results recently for somebody who has received a transaction in the last seven days, but that seven day audience have had such a good experience that they're quite willing to go back and repurchase. Uh, so that's been extremely powerful. Um, and remember that your Google for nonprofits account will only let you do search ads, but there's absolutely no reason why you can't have a display, uh, display account set up as well. So it has to be a separate account and you will have to pay for your display ads in a YouTube account. Uh, if you run YouTube ads, but this is an extremely powerful opportunity and they all talk in together. So you can create specific display, uh, display campaigns, targeting people that watch your YouTube videos, for example, um, and bringing people through to the website. So if you bring people through to a subscription page on your website, uh, which is right here, Ooh. Okay. Uh, I would have an actual subscription page on your website. So I would keep that visitor on the website with the appropriate pixel set up so that we can track who has come through to the website. Um, we can track what action they took, for example, signing up for the newsletter um, and keep them on the website from there. So we use HubSpot quite a lot ourselves. Um, these kind of exit intent pop-ups are quite powerful. So if somebody has scrolled down the page a certain amount, or if they look like they're leaving, we can capture the subscription and we can track that as a conversion with our Google and our Facebook ads in our CRM so that we can make sure that we're capturing those visitors early and often. Get them onto the newsletter list and make sure that that newsletter list is set up so that we can then um, 
contact those people when it comes to Giving Tuesday. So since I'm talking about uh, newsletters, let's talk about newsletters for a sec. So we definitely want to make the newsletter easy to subscribe to without being irritating. This pop-up, if it appeared within a second of visiting the website, would drive you up the bend and you'd close it rather than actually subscribing to the newsletter. But if it does come through when it detects that you're likely to leave or after a period of time, it's much less irritating. Uh, it's also going to be much more useful if, um, if we don't have several pop-ups that come up with different messages. So refine down your message and focus on what you need to focus on there. So a really, a really good subscription pop-up that you're tracking with your conversions in Google and Facebook ads is ideal to making sure that you've got those people coming through. Now, if you're uh, lucky like Kate and you've got a CRM like Salesforce built up, you can then look at segmenting your database into people who are, first of all, just donors and non-donors. And the messaging would be different for the two of them. So the message to donors would need to reflect the fact that they're already donors, they're very valued people in our database, but we want to send them a second communicate, or we want to get them to make a second or, or further donations um, versus the non-donors who are interested in what we're doing. Some of them will have the, the capacity to make a donation, some won't. So we can go out to those people with a list of the um, things that they can do to get involved and to support our organization, or in this case, Kate's organization. Um, but we have the ability to segment them out into those basic categories. Most people would be able to break them into those two categories. Um, once they are broken up into those two categories, the messaging for a, um, a donor might be as simple as if you've got a um, donor matching campaign, alerting them to the fact that if they make another donation, their money can go further this time because the dollar match is going to be matched by QBE. Um, and I've just recorded that, Kate, so you can take that back to QBE and they can confirm that they've just committed to dollar matching for your Giving Tuesday campaign. You can let me later. Um, so... What we can then do, though, is we can break out our um, donors into multiple categories. So, for example, we might want to break them into the very basic category of are they a one-off donor, are they a weekly donor, are they a monthly donor, or are they a yearly donor? And so if they are a one-off donor, we want to encourage them to become a regular donor. If they're a yearly donor, we want to try and get them into a, a monthly donation. If they're a monthly donor, we you want to get them into a weekly donation. But we can segment that out to send them the right message at the right time. And it, these people can be, uh, I guess, led into the, the fact that you're running this Giving Tuesday campaign early. So we can start to communicate that probably any time from now, really, but I would say from the 1st of November onwards is where I would get um, really big on the promotional train here. But make sure that you've got that ability to segment out that audience into your different donors uh, and make sure that you've got all of your communication ready to go. Uh, there's no reason why you can't build all of those emails right now and send them out over the next, uh, get them ready to send in the, the last week of November. You may also want to go as far as sending out an email every day if you've got a different message, or if you just want to confirm to your donors and your supporters how far you are towards your target. So a really good idea to make sure that you set a target so that you can get your community involved in promoting what you're trying to do. Um, and in your case, Kate, your target might have something to do with the um, wiry driver, uh, dryer, you might be able to turn that into a target to um, purchase a certain number of dryers, uh, or something like that. Now, I think the other thing from here is, uh, so may, definitely make sure you've got all your emails ready to go, we're good. We've got all of our search campaigns ready to go, so that's all good. 
start to get your um, graphics ready for your display campaigns. So whether they're Facebook or they're um, Google or wherever else you want to run your ads, make sure you've got all of those ready in advance and make sure you've got all of your organic social ready to go as well. Um, even if you're updating the ad copy as you go, uh, you can um, have the entire message ready to go with the exception of say the dollar amount uh, and then you can schedule them all in in that last week of November in particular to make sure you're capitalizing on that. All right. Now, the, um, the last thing I really wanted to cover here is don't forget to nurture your contacts after the big day. So when I talk about nurturing, I, I sort of teased this a little bit before, but after I make a donation, I would typically be enrolled in some form of drip campaign or email sequence that would take me through uh, a number of steps about what my donation has done. So particularly with Orange Sky, I think um, the, the story of the people that work with Orange Sky, um, when I've heard your, your founders in radio interviews and things like that, I think the, the strongest part of the message that, that resonates with me the most is the story about how the service actually helps the people um, that are clients. And if we can get some of those stories that go into that, it helps people feel that their donation has gone to a good place. It gets them, gives them a reminder that their donation has gone to a good place. But also we can then make sure that um, we use that as an opportunity for further donations, whether that be regular converting to regular giving or whether that just be um, additional donations leading into Christmas or uh, a gift of a, um, you know, I have purchased Bruce being my best buddy. I've bought him a, uh, clean laundry and a warm shower for a friend doing it tough instead of buying a Christmas present this year. Um, I don't think Bruce really needs a present this year. He's, he's got a house full of clutter. So I'm supporting orange sky instead of supporting him. That's not a bad anyway. So that gives us an opportunity to really, um, try and pick up further donations and look at other ways that people can support the organization. Because particularly, again, we're picking on Orange Sky, you have other ways that we can get involved with your organization. And not everyone can afford to donate all the time. Um, but maybe they work for an employer that's looking for a um, corporate partnership. Uh, maybe they want to encourage other people to fundraise for you. Maybe they want to try out the Sudsy Challenge. Um, maybe they're looking at revising their will and they want to leave a bequest. There are a lot of other ways that you can engage with Orange Sky rather than just providing a one-off donation on Giving Tuesday. So if we use Giving Tuesday as an opportunity to capture those people's information, they're going into your CRM, we can then drop out a drip campaign, try and keep your messaging short, sharp and shiny about impact and about how they can further support um, because otherwise they're not going to read it and really nail down that messaging so that it's as, um, as easy for them to follow and as easy for them to take action. Yeah, and in your particular case, Kate, you've got everything set up so far to um, capitalize on that already, which is fantastic. And it sounds like you've already put some thought into your Giving Tuesday campaign and you're well ahead of uh, a lot of people at this point, so I'm sure yours will be a huge success. Um, my only feedback from looking through everything today would just be to look at the newsletter mechanism, um, and I think it would be better to put that newsletter mechanism on a page on the website where you can appropriately track the conversions on that page. Um, I'd also really recommend some form of pop-up. Um, and the way that you've got multiple touch points to um, help us understand how you can support Orange Sky, I think you'll get people, if you've got your data appropriately segmented in the CRM, 
there's a whole range of options that you could push for there to um, get people to support the areas of your organization that they're not already supporting. Okay, now do we have any questions on that? Not yet. No questions. Cool. So um, what I would recommend that you do from here is jump onto the Giving Tuesday website, which is just givingtuesday.org.au. There's a range of logos, graphic tiles, um, all of the assets that you'll need to run a um, run a campaign on Giving Tuesday. It looks like they've updated the website for this year, but they haven't actually updated the some of the assets. Um, but there'll be enough there for you to get started on your campaign. Uh, and you'll be able to go through and find some additional resources there and sign up for the newsletter. Now, Bruce has asked the big question, which is about, do we have much info on the success of Giving Tuesday in Australia? Um, and the short answer is not case studies. No one's really consolidated those because it's been such a um, grassroots organization in Australia. Um, there have been a couple of reports commissioned by our community who are running it these days, but the simple answer is that organisations that get engaged with the um, get engaged with the cause are the ones that get the return. So at the moment, we've seen uh, on in some years we've seen roughly sort of 500 to 1,000 organisations get involved in Giving Tuesday. Um, and there's about 60, 70,000 non-profits in Australia. So it's still not a lot of organisations getting involved at this stage. Um, it's a lot bigger over in the US. Giving Tuesday is a lot more of a household name. Um, but usually we find that with these kind of initiatives, Australia is a bit behind. The organisations that do get involved um, do get quite a good opportunity to profile raise and and get in front of the right people. Uh, so most of the most of the organisations getting involved are smaller organisations, and they can do things like um, giving thanks to their sponsors and supporters, particularly those that haven't had digital um, fundraising opportunities in the past. Um, there's uh, people who have organised things like morning teas, you know, buy our morning tea. People have used it as an opportunity to, the, the giving, matched giving has been a big opportunity. Uh, and what we typically see is once an organisation gets involved, they capitalise on that year on year and it takes a number of years to really get the growth that you're looking for there. Um, but it does work. I don't have an exact figure on how much money people have raised though, Bruce, um, but there is a really good document on the Giving Tuesday website about where this is going and, and how it's gonna work over time. Um, all right, if we don't have any other questions, we might finish up for today. Are there any stats on searches for Giving Tuesday in Australia? Ah, Bruce knows that I love a, love a bit of search engine optimization. Uh, and so let me get that number for you, Bruce. And so this is another reason why you want to get in early because you want to get those good search rankings and make sure that people are searching for you. So the short answer to Bruce's very good questions 
is uh, there are not very many people searching for Giving Tuesday right this second, but that's probably because it's not Giving Tuesday yet. And so we can clearly see that there's a huge trend in um, Giving Tuesday in November, December every year. Um, so all of the data hits a big crescendo and then drops right off and people forget about it until about this time of year. And then people are searching for keywords like um, Giving Tuesday events, Giving Tuesday, um, annual day of giving and looking at things like National Giving Day. Um, giving Tuesday is still, sometimes it might be a term that people aren't fully familiar with. But even just looking at what comes up when you do a search for Giving Tuesday gives you some great ideas on what's going, what can be achieved there. Um, some of the questions that come up are from people that are looking for um, ideas. So how to create a Giving Tuesday campaign on Facebook. Um, others, there's a lot of people asking about uh, matching donations and looking for opportunities to capitalize on matching donations. Um, but in Australia, most of the um, pages that rank in the top 10 aren't actually nonprofits. So there's a good opportunity there for people to look at getting their Giving Tuesday events out and about by having content on the website early and frequently to make sure that you're in front of those people. But again, your newsletter database will let you pick up on that as well. If you've got good content about your Giving Tuesday campaign and any Giving Tuesday events that you're running, that will also help you pick up on that and, uh, and continue on, on a successful campaign. All right. I hope that answers that very good question, Bruce. So... If we don't have any other questions, we're going to wind up for today. Thank you for joining me for a look through Giving Tuesday. Thank you very much, Kate, for giving me a very good example that I could go through and, and have a look at in detail. And I think you're in really good shape for your campaign this year. So congratulations. You've done the hard work and you're ready to go. Um, and thanks, Bruce, for dobbing Kate in so that I knew who to pick on. Um, we have another event coming up in a month, so make sure you jump on events.techsuit.org uh, and get registered for the next event, um, which I'm sure will be another very exciting event um, leading into Christmas. Um, and I look forward to catching up with you then. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>